What up, my fellow Knicks fans? This is your guy, Marcellus Ease. And don't panic quite yet. Now, it's been a long time coming, and Steve Mills is finally out that door. And I believe James Dolan struggled with this decision for a long time, and so many years, is because Steve Mills, he has had a long history with the Knicks, especially on the operations side when it comes to business in Master Square Garden. Now, he was the chief operating officer and sports business president of the Master Square Garden since 2003. So it was his job to handle responsibilities of the financial side of MSG to get corporate sponsorship and to, you know, to have basically uh, future business plans for MSG and the New York Rangers, the Knicks and the New York Liberty. So he's done a really excellent job when it comes to that, because as you can see with MSG, their net worth, especially the New York Knicks, have all gone up since 2003 and the Knicks are worth the most uh, I believe they are the franchise that's worth the most in the NBA at four billion dollars so that's why this decision has been tough for James Dolan throughout the years and we've seen Steve Mills last through all these regimes I mean he's been around since the Isaiah Thomas years and as we've seen in 2013 he took over to become the president of the Knicks and that's when things started to go downhill now in 2012 the year before the Knicks won 54 game with coach Mike Woodson and unfortunately, Steve Mills, once he took over, it was very strange. He got rid of Donnie Gun Grunwald, the president that put that 2012-54 win Nick team together. And not only that, he got rid of him quietly. And nobody really knew the reason why. There was no press conference or anything. He also got rid of Mike Woodson's coaching staff. A lot of people don't know. Don't It kind of went under the radar. But his whole coaching staff was switched up for the following season. Then we've seen dumbass trades like the Andre Bargnani trade. They had an opportunity to trade for Kyle Lowry. They didn't pull on that, but they pulled on Andre Bargnani. It was weird. Uh, Masai Ujiri definitely ripped off Steve Mills on that trade, and he brags about it to this day. So that's been basically the history uh, of Steve Mills. It's just been one bad decision after another. Even when the Knicks traded assets away, like J.R. Smith, Iman Shumpert, uh, Christoph Brzingis, we never really got nothing of high value back. So his negotiation skills as far as getting talent back while we give away assets, it wasn't really that good. And at the same time, he wasn't recruiting free agents and he wasn't even able to have a good reputation with players on the team. Even Derek Rose has mentioned that he didn't trust Steve Mills. You know, Christoph Brzingis had a falling out. It's just been, you know, and, and we also seen this past summer, the Knicks are not able to recruit top end free agents they're just not even looking the next way and it has to do with a lot of the relationships the players have and trust within the these two guys right here the front office with steve starting with steve mills now with steve mills exiting the team marcus morris has all of a sudden popped up on the trade block again and i was saying this before the fact that the knicks were not willing to trade him it showed that steve mills was trying to save his job for the current season at the expense of the future of the Knicks. Because what are we going to do with Marcus Morris? He's a 10-year vet. Ain't no shame in his game. He's increasing his market value. But he's on a one-year deal. We don't have any upside into playing him all these minutes, especially over young guys that we just drafted and we're supposed to be invested in. Guys like Kevin Knox, Frank Nilekina, Dennis Smith Jr., you know, R.J. Barrett. We can't be playing Marcus Morris over these guys and then giving him a bunch of last-minute you know, big shot attempts in the fourth quarter like he's Allen Iverson. You know, it's rare that a guy in his 10th season all of a sudden puts up these numbers. Of course, he's putting it up on a losing team and with a desperate GM. And then also yesterday, you know, Steve Mills is on the phone trying to get D'Angelo Russell. This guy is off. He's just trying to make a splash. D'Angelo Russell, he's a good player, but right now he's on a very large contract. He's not going to really get teams over that hill. He's just a, a good player. He's kind of a... A nice little uh, piece to fit in with another stud player. But he's not that main piece. And to, to try to get him in a trade for that much money, especially what Golden State has signed him for, it just doesn't make any sense. Now, the future of the team right here should go uphill. Now we have Marcus Morris on the trade block. At least we can get some assets. And we can start to build for the future as the, these guys in the front office now don't have to act desperate to hold their jobs. Ain't no knock on Steve Mills. This shit ain't work out with him. It's, it's been be definitely uh, probably a worse tenure with the Knicks with Steve Mills as president than Isaiah Thomas. I mean, we lost stars. We couldn't even trade any 
any good plays that we had for any other assets. And we couldn't even recruit free agents. We got a bunch of guys on one-year deals, two years in a row. And we got, you know, free agents openly saying that they don't want to sign with the Knicks. I mean, this guy failed in every metric when it came to basketball operations. But when it came to the financial side of Master Square Garden, he probably was on point. And we could see from the net worth of the Knicks as a lot of those things kind of fell on his responsibility. And James Dolan, once again, he's like many of these owners. A lot of these owners don't really know that much about basketball. They just they just know to pay guys and they just know the stars and who can attract people to come in and, and buy tickets. But they're not really basketball people. And James Dolan is just another owner that falls into that, into that position. And it's up to him right now. I'm hearing that he's going after Masai Ujiri. But it's up to him right now to actually select someone that actually can do a good job at being president of basketball operations. Not a guy that he likes or not someone popular like Phil Jackson. He has to choose someone that, that, that has the highest qualifications for the job. You guys stay safe. Peace.